Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. Well, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're watching this. Um, I wish you had told me that you were dressing up because I would have put on a suit. I always look for nothing to, to, to work. I'll, I'll have you know, this is America. And just because we're not doing this on a red carpet, just because I'm stuck quarantined at home, does not mean I don't still have a wardrobe, young man. <laughs> uh, well, I feel very underdressed, which is something I rarely say because all my friends give me crap for constantly, wear a for constantly wearing a blazer. But well, well, of, of course, next time we do this, oh no. I always have to start my conversations with you, the Chancellor. I also felt, you know, I always have to bow to the Chancellor um, and felt I needed to up my game. So if I can't do it in name, I will do it in uh, attire. Well, we appreciate it. Um, thank you so much for being here today. Um, season three premiere last night, um, which I imagine like, you, wait, how many times have you watched the season premiere at this point? <laughs> um, so obviously you, you watch it kind of as bits kind of go through mm -hmm. and, and you go through various drafts um, because Chick Egley was very kind in bringing me into a lot of the, the pre-production, the, the creative, the writing, and then the, in post as well. He kept me very much informed with, with um, everything. I would say, I, not as much as the first season, but mm -hmm. I have seen this, this episode probably five times now, six, maybe, maybe six times now. In full. And like each time, do you find something new that you enjoy about it? Or what, or what is your favorite aspect of it? Well, that's, that's kind of the great thing about American Gods is because it's so complex and deep in, in, in with so much uh, information and, and storyline, there's always something you can find more. So we brought in a new, a new music uh, composer this, this, this season. And just even the, mo the music choices, everything... <laughs> It's trying to hint to our audience about something, you know? So if you watch it, you can, you can kind of watch it just to enjoy the story. And the next time you watch it, you'll notice certain things that people say, or you'll notice certain sounds that we've put in that are very subtle and, and they're there to kind of tweak your subconscious. That, you know, like Sixth Sense, when you go back and rewatch mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, it was there the whole time. It's kind of what American Gods does. It likes to lay like these little Easter eggs. So every time I watch it, I kind of, get to you know, see a little bit of that. And, uh, and also just enjoy everyone else's performances, to be honest, because you know, it's, it's stacked full of fantastic talent and lots of new talent that uh, were very well received uh, last night and today around the world uh, with Dominique Jackson um, mm -hmm. making an appearance, Ashley Reyes. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's an exciting week for us. Um, actually, I was going to ask you, because I know, I mean, uh, with, on, on, on the subject of Dominic Jackson, I'm, I'm curious, do you get a chance to work with her and or Danny Trejo at all this season as the world? I, without spoiling too much, did not get to work directly. Mm -hmm. see, see how I word it? I did not get to work directly <laughs> with the wonderful Dominique Jackson. But um, I can talk about, you know, I, without spoiling stuff is... What absolute wonder. First thing in the morning, mm -hmm. stunning, beautiful, a lot of fun. Came in with, you know, courage and power and grace and beauty. And, uh, you know, you see from that, I mean, that's possibly one of the best entrances I've seen on the show. And we, we do like to mm -hmm. make an entrance. Um, it was very kind of Goodfellas, right? Or kind of uh, <laughs> you know, the, the Godfather. She, you know, she came with, with the thunder and the lightning. It was, mm -hmm. it was fantastic. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really great that she was able to uh, join the family. Uh, yesterday, we had some of your castmates do a takeover on the Internet Weekly Instagram. <laughs> and, the, and they all, uh, when we asked who's the most likely to break, they all said you. Uh, I got which, is, which was I... honestly, <laughs> which is like the least surprising thing in the world. Um, but I'm curious, though, I mean, I mean in, in this premiere specifically, which scene for you was the hardest to get through because Ian kept making you break? Oh, <laughs> Okay. okay, so, I mean, there's lots because he's just a prankster. He's just always messing and, and busting my balls. But speaking of balls, there is a scene where uh, I'm not actually in, but uh, I wanted to just make sure Ian was okay because let's say he was wearing very little um, in, in an episode. And it was cold. It's Toronto in the winter, uh, first thing in the morning. When I, and when I say morning, I mean like two in the morning, something like that. 
And I was there for a little bit of moral support. And I, <laughs> I can't get this out of my head. I, I'm traumatized for life is, is seeing uh, basically a naked McShane running through the streets of Toronto. Um, if that doesn't make you want to watch season three of American Gods, I don't know what will. Uh, but I could not hold myself together. It was the funniest. And he was just there. You know, I mean, this guy is, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's, he's an elder gentleman. Than me. Um, but he just goes hard, you know. That's a terrible word to use when I'm talking about naked in the <laughs> uh, he, he, he's, he's committed, yes. And stop doing this with your hand. What am I doing? Um, yeah, he's committed. He's very committed. And, you know, he just went out there, did his thing, and... It's a hilarious scene, and I could not stop giving it. I had to move away from like the tent where uh, the directors were because I was too distracting. Because I, I'm a child, you know, I, I find everything funny. I love life, mm -hmm. and I can't stop giggling. And Ian is definitely one of the causes of that. So, I would say that uh, a naked McShane running through the streets of Toronto was probably my uh, funniest <laughs> moment this season. <laughs> I remember, I think it was at Comic-Con, when we spoke, you mentioned how you snuck, uh, when, um, you snuck onto set also to see, uh, to watch Marilyn Manson's scene um, that's, that opens the premiere. Uh, what did. was that experience like? It was great. That was the first time I met um, Marilyn. And um, he, he was, again, fantastic. What a way to open, you know, with a, a death metal concert and, and Wednesday, you know, stage diving uh, off a balcony. Um, which he, of course he did himself. No stuntmen were involved uh, at all because that's just what McShane does. But um, it was fantastic, you know. I, I, I managed to sneak on one of the, the, the rock t-shirts and I'm, I'm about four rows back. So if you look carefully in the crowd, you'll see me tongue out, rocking out, shaking my head, uh, really loving it. Um, but uh, it was fantastic. It was a great atmosphere. We had lots of, kind of actual fans of Marilyn Manson in the, in the audience, you know, when we when we kind of get our, our extras and our supporting artists uh, for for background, um, you know, you get them from various um, sources. But as soon as people found out that Marilyn Manson was going to be on the set, you know, we we you know, you had to literally hold them back at the door. So that was a very Marilyn friendly crowd, and uh, mm -hmm. he was fantastic. It was a great way to start the show, and uh, yeah, that's a, that's a that's a strange little tick off, off, off the box, which, which is what I keep doing on this show. You know, I keep getting to work with, you know, incre incredible talent that, you know, I grew up watching. He used to mm -hmm. terrify me as a child. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, you mentioned at the beginning of this, um, some of the new characters we got in this episode. I want to start with um, Cordelia, played by Ashley Reyes. Um, we only got a taste of her in the premiere, uh, but I'm curious, I mean, looking ahead a bit, I mean, how would you describe sort of Shadow and Cordelia's dynamic? Like, is Shadow, like, run away as far as, as fast as you can from this madman or <laughs> I mean Shadow's definitely kind of holding all that world at, at arm's mm -hmm. length and here he sees another human or who, who he thinks someone is, is human because he never knows who's human and who's not in this mm -hmm. world um you know he thought he's, he was human his whole life until uh last season so um he definitely sees something in Cordelia and mm -hmm. and he will kind of get closer to her. Their dynamic actually is one of my favorite things this season is how the, the, the two kind of grow together. Um, it's, a, it's a really lovely dynamic, similar to, to that of uh, Sam Crow in, in the book mm -hmm. and, and how Devery Jacobs uh, kind of did last season. And she's also going to be returning this season, which is fantastic to see, you know, Sam Crow come back. Um, but yeah, he, he, he does. I mean, again, I don't want to spoil it too much. He kind of wants her to find her own way, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, he doesn't want to push his ideas onto other people, which I think is very important. You know, he's, he's not mansplaining to, uh, mm -hmm. to, the, to, to her. So he wants her to kind of make her own choices, but he does give her a little word of warning that she might be in over her head and to just kind of look out for herself. You know, Mr. Wednesday is not necessarily the most loyal of uh, mm -hmm. bosses. Um, and with, and with Shadow and Wednesday, I mean, in this, in this, in this premiere, they have that, uh, sort of contentious first conversation where, where Wednesday sort of explains what happened between, uh, Shadow, with, with, uh, sorry, between him and Shadow's mother. Um, and, and, and I'm guessing now, I guess, moving forward, I guess, I mean, what other questions does sort of Shadow have about that, about that sort of, about his history now? Because I think like that conversation barely scratched the surface 
of this earth shattering revelation that he's his son. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tough situation. And, and in a world of fantasy and sci-fi, God's dead wives, these are the moments that are really relatable to an audience um, mm-hmm. and kind of keep it grounded. Um, and so you find Shadow in a situation where he's got no time for this guy. This guy could have been there at any moment in his life and he's got no time for him. And you see the disdain in, in Shadow's face. He doesn't want to spend a, a, another second, but he does have so many questions. Not just, you know, what kind of God is Shadow Moon? You know, what kind of mm-hmm. powers does he have? What's his history? How did this happen? But also like his mother, you know, where were you? Like, mm-hmm. could you have saved her? There, there's a lot of questions that go unsaid um, because it, Shadow's mother really was the light in his life. And the, and the only thing he, he and, and person he truly, truly loved. And I feel his whole life he's been searching for that love again. And to find out that your father was a God and maybe could have saved her, you know, what was mm-hmm. his involvement? So there's a lot more questions there. Um, but Shadow will be joined this season by the Orisha. Um, Wale will be playing Chango. We've got uh, Guardia Horizon, who's a, who's a Shun. We, you know, we've got some um, spirit guides who will kind of, his black ancestors will kind of guide him through this story and help him mm-hmm. find those, some of the answers to those questions. Mm-hmm. I mean, as someone, I mean, you've you've been uh, you've been very open about how much you love just the the book American Gods. I mean, yeah. how do you feel sort of getting um, getting to be part of this sort of new, I guess, this new material? Because like in the books, they don't really dive into the Orishas. Um, in the book, that's this that's that's a sort of a new thing for this TV show. What's it like getting to explore some of that stuff? And they're still still and they're still being surprised, I guess. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it it's. It is an adaptation from from Neil Gaiman's book, and we, we we've kind of had this had to steady the ship a bit because in season two we really did kind of drift away, and it became a kind of a treasure hunt of kind of nothingness. But you'd find like little moments, and so what we've done this season is get back to the book, you know, get back to Shadow's journey, back to his his legside journey, which is my favorite part of, of Neil Gaiman's book, and you know, it's it's where it becomes more grounded, and you see a, a, a human interactions uh, kind of develop Shadow's character more. Um, otherwise, he's just the, the, the last guy in the room to know anything. And it's, it kind of gets a bit repetitive. So this season's very different because Shadow's now the most intelligent person in the room. Or, but not intelligent, but the most knowledgeable. Um, mm-hmm. And so with that coming back to the book, you also want to cater to fans uh, who have read the book and keep it you know, interesting and exciting for them and investigate certain things that maybe Neil wasn't able to always you know, delve into, like, like Shadow's mm-hmm. background, like Shadow's uh, Black ancestors and the history, which is what we've been able to kind of do on this show, is, is kind of really dig deep into, into the history of, of, of America and immigration and what has built this, this, this country. Um, I think right now we're in, a, we're in a, a current climate where America's finally figured out, you know, um, the line that... that, that Mr. Wednesday said in episode one in season one, which is crazy, which is America is the only country in the world that doesn't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And I feel for the first time, America's been shown a mirror and they're actually looking at their true reflection and it's shocking. Um, Unfortunately for America, the rest of the world already knows kind of all this. And I feel people of color have seen the true America as well. Um, But, you know, this last week has, has, has kind of opened a lot of people's eyes. And so it's fantastic that, you know, Chick Egley and Neil Gaiman were open to kind of really delving into that history because I don't feel that this country will ever truly move forward until it accepts its past. You know, it's, it's always uh, the most powerful, the biggest, number one in the world. And mm-hmm. it kind of shuns, you know, you know, any negativity and any dark past that it had. But you have to own that, you know, like as all human beings, you know, yourself, I'm sure you're pure as heck. But mm-hmm. myself, I'm a, you know. Uh, and most of us, we, we all have a past and it's what makes mm-hmm. us, you know, the good and the bad. And you have to own the bad as much as you own the good, because that's what's built me as a human being, as as a person. And, you know, the sooner I feel America does that, the sooner it can move forward and hopefully grow stronger when it realizes, like in American Gods, that the we is stronger than the I. And that's the mm-hmm. message of American Gods this, this season when Wale and, and um, Horizon come in um it is the we that is strong um and only when we come together can we truly be powerful well put um and um and again on the subject of new characters i mean uh this new setting of lakeside 
is uh, one of the most iconic par parts of the book. Um, I'm curious because the episode ends with someone putting a gun, holding a gun to Shadow's head. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, is, 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 is that indicative of sort of how this small town of Lakeside reacts to a black, a big black man like Shadow sort of yeah. moving in? This is this is this is the great thing where we can we can play stuff without having you know a, a fantasy audience are just so intelligent it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. so on the nose it doesn't have to be you know spoon fed to them we're able to tell the story that with with just moments and things that you just don't realize you know it's 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 a black man coming to a town as soon as he sees Chad Mulligan's police vehicle you know he's just mm -hmm. got off the bus and he's talking to two little white girls. And he's new in town, you know. Now, most people will say, so, that's fine. But as a person of color, you really have to tread lightly. We've seen far too many stories and examples of, of you know, people of color walking too fast. But they're obviously mm -hmm. running from something. Or they're walking too slow. They're obviously casing something, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible discrimination that, that, that people of color have to face. And that's very kind of littered throughout the show. And it's something that... Um, Shadow will talk to Chad Mulligan about in episode two, uh, played by the fantastic Eric Johnson, um, who's a, a, a gr another great add to our Lakeside crew with uh, Lila Lauren and uh, Julia Sweeney. Um, and all three kind of really do pr approach this topic of, you know, he's not just the new guy in town, but he is literally the only guy in town who's of color and mm -hmm. uh, kind of all the, 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 the weight that comes with that. Um, is going to be played out throughout this season. Mm -hmm. um, and before we wrap up, um, I'm curious because I remember you mentioned at the beginning of how like uh, Chick uh, brought you into the writers' room ahead of time. I'm curious what were some of those conversations you had with the writers about about this season and sort of the sort of, or I guess guess what perspective did you bring um, to those conversations to, to those convos with them? Um, well, the thing is, it's it's it was just uh, like a a real honor to be in that room with such talent. As soon as you go in and you look around at, at, at all the diversity and the, and the knowledge that, that people brought. Um, and I've said this before because, you know, obviously uh, American Gods is a hot topic when it comes to diversity and various things that have been said before this show aired um, that we can definitely put to rest um, because we've always said the proof's in the pudding. I think if we've learned anything in the, in, in the last year is that you know, lies will always travel faster than the truth. And, you know, you can make false allegations and, and, assert, and accusations without being fact-checked, without any evidence or proof, as long as you say it first to set your own narrative. Mm -hmm. um, what we were able to do is put the proof in the pudding. We didn't talk about anything. We're just like, here it is. The writing room is roughly 10% cisgendered, white, straight male. The rest mm -hmm. is black, Latin, biracial, white, male, female, LGBTQ, formerly incarcerated because Chick Egley and Neil Gaiman wanted as much diversity behind the camera so that we could be truthful on camera because you can't be authentic if you don't have true authentic voices behind the camera telling those stories. And it wasn't just one person's voice, it was about everyone's voice. So not just on camera, but behind camera, it's about the we and not the I. We've moved away mm -hmm. from the, the, the selfishness. We've moved away from uh, the self-serving and moved to the, the greater good. How can we all rise together and push forward telling everyone's story? And to see that in a room and to be a part of it actually gave me chills. It gave me chills to see their passion and for people wanting to tell their story, their truth, coming from their own experiences of their lives. You know, mm -hmm. we, we have the LGBTQ telling their story, not me giving, uh, you know, my empathy and giving me my, giving you my thoughts. And when you write a season, you, you tend to have writers go away and do their episodes. You do episode one, I'll do two, you'll do three, you'll do four. And that's what they did in this show. But instead of going away to their separate offices, which of course they did from time to time, mm -hmm. they had a communal room where they would be in there and they would ask for advice. They're literally looking at you saying, What's, what would a black person say? What would a, a woman say? How would uh, the LGBTQ community respond to this? As someone who was formerly incarcerated, what's the first thing that you think of when you walk through this door? You know, mm -hmm. and that blew my mind. And it was fascinating to kind of see that depth in, and commitment to inclusion, representation, 
because you know that's that's what's important we need to kind of make sure that everyone has a voice in this world it's it's very important especially in america today and then from a practical point of view as well just just seeing a story laid out asking me what does shadow mean to me like where do i want to see him go i in, obviously we're doing the adaptation of the book and he's i'm i'm building a character slowly and i've got to get mm -hmm. to a certain spot um but how do we create the path to get there and it was nice to kind of be involved in that and in, in his language how he speaks how he's gonna grow not just this season but through to the next season that's something that i've not had before you know we always had the book there as a, as a blueprint but the, the show kind of meandered so crazily as you're in season two you kind of got a little bit lost and you weren't yeah. sure where where you were going as an actor but in this season as an actor i finally had my 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 you know my middle and my end to my story. I, I, I knew my beginning in seasons one and two. You, mm -hmm. you, you keep that history with you and carry it forward. But now I know my season three and I know where that character's going. And as an actor, it just makes you so much more efficient. Um, and all the actors were actually all brought in. You know, Yatide Budaki, Bruce Langley, mm -hmm. uh, Ian McShane, Emily Browning. You know, we, we, we're, we're all kind of brought in to kind of discuss that journey together and what we wanted to bring to the show this season. So. It was very inclusive, very like family oriented. You know, everyone kind of had a voice because, you know, people coming in wanted to hear it. And mm -hmm. that's very rare, to be honest. That's very rare in TV. You know, uh, Brian Fuller and Michael Green were very much like that at the beginning, but they were establishing a world and uh, we've moved on from that now. And it's now kind of a whole different thing. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it was quite a process, but I think with, the, with all the reviews coming out, I think we really have, you know, smashed out of the park. It's, it, does, it, it really is a true return to form. And I feel that, that the fans, you know, in America watching on Stars and around the world on Amazon Prime Video are really just uh, glad to see the show back. Glad to see that we, you know, as Wednesday said, same, same soul, different chassis. Mm -hmm. Uh, and on that note, I guess to wrap up, last question, uh, just to give everyone watching something to look forward to, um, what is the one episode you are really looking forward to people seeing this year? Five. That you're, five? Uh -huh. <laughs> is, is that the Ocean's Eleven one? Episode five is my Ocean's Eleven episode. <laughs> Damien Kindler is, is, was, was writing that, and it was just so much fun to see Shadow completely, you know, at home and at ease, a different side of Shadow, a fun Shadow, a, a very... Uh, con man shadow doing his thing i get to interact with with, with, with bill quiz with cordelia with tech boy you know with with uh, wednesday with you know blythe danner comes in and you know that's another actress that i you know i love watching growing up um and then obviously the season finale you mm -hmm. know the season finale is phenomenal this season we've got 10 episodes instead of eight so we're getting two extra episodes and the season finale when i put it down i text chick eggley and some of the writers straight away and just said wow it blew my mind and it's literally, for me, it's the best cliffhanger of all three seasons. And it just wants you, you know, coming back. I, I think fans, fans will probably get angry the cliffhanger's that good. <laughs> They'll be angry that, that, that there's not the next one. You know, we live in a binge culture and you mm -hmm. know, people want to see that episode. Like, so the, the, the sooner we get back to filming and, and, and making the, make, finishing off this story, the, the better, because yeah, episode five is fun, but episode 10 is, epic awesome uh well ricky thank you again for joining us um as you i'm not sure if you're not sure if you see the comments but the most consistent comment has just been how much they love you so i'm sure everyone watching really appreciates you tuning uh you dropping by for this i appreciate it. i just want to say massive love to, to all our fans uh all around the world wherever you're watching this and to you sir for always having the time and patience to deal with my bumbling yabbering all the time and, and craziness this early in the morning i'm sure you've got better things to do like breakfast not not now i'm stuck at home so it, it works out now yeah well it's always a pleasure to, to chat to your smiley face man i appreciate thank everything you. That you do so thank you for for your patience and, and the time today same uh, you too. stay safe bye